Well, in our previous segment, we talked about how difficult it has been for patients with conditions that qualify under the state's new medical marijuana law to get a doctor who will help sign them up. But for the 183 patients who have been able to pick up their prescriptions, we are hearing a range of patient responses to the medical cannabis. Three-year-old Harley Hunley's mother, Beth, tells, uh, told us last week she has seen a remarkable change in her daughter's condition. She says both the number of seizures that Harlow is getting as well as their severity has improved dramatically. Joining us this morning is another mom, Jessica Hauser, who helped lead the fight to pass this bill and whose son, Wyatt, who's also three, suffers from FLSE. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks so much for having me again, Esme. Isn't that wonderful news about Harlow? Well, it it's is awesome. remarkable. I mean, uh, Beth uh, told our Rachel Slavic that it's just been night and day. Mm -hmm. What has Wyatt's response been? He has a, a different form of epilepsy. Wyatt has a different form of epilepsy, and his response hasn't been quite so dramatic, but we have seen fewer seizures and generally less intense. There are some seizures that we're hoping to get much better control of in the near future as we um, adjust his dosing, maybe adjust his formula of cannabis. And I asked you to actually bring in the medical marijuana and you have it today. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually is in a canister and then it's just a little yep. picture. If you can hold that up yeah, for us. Yeah, absolutely. So it comes in a canister like this that's got a child um, tamper-proof top, or not tamper-proof, tamper-evident. Um, and then we spilled a little on the outside of our bottle, so it doesn't look great, but it's well, just a liquid. The, that, a yeah, that's life, right? So, um, but we've been working with Minnesota Medical Solutions. And, and you use an a, a oral syringe, a which anybody tiny, who's ever given a child. Yeah, a, yeah this is the way to give children medication, no matter what they might need it for. Um, but this is uh, one milliliter. So when you give a child, um, say, a dose of um, ibuprofen, you're typically giving them five milliliters. So this is a, a syringe that's one-fifth of that, and then we give him even less. So we give him about 0.25 milliliters, so just right to here. Okay, so you're going to go be going back, though, to the pharmacist to see if we, they can make an adjustment that might get uh, more of an improvement. Yeah, one of the um, really great things about Minnesota Medical Solutions is they want to help patients start low and go slow. So the, they want to minimize any of the concerns or risks that doctors might be having right now by starting on very low doses. They're very transparent in what is in each of their formulas. So there's no reason that doctors or other pharmacists couldn't find out exactly what their patients are giving. So we'll keep tweaking and adjusting Wyatt's dose until we see some better seizure control. But yeah. Overall, no side effects for him, just some real minor ones that we've been able to and mitigate. Some, and some minor improvements as well. Definitely improvements. All right. You heard Dr. Thorson, and most patients have not been able to get their own doctor to put them into the system. Right. They're having a tough time. What's your reaction to what he had to say? My reaction is that the problems that he illustrated in Minnesota are completely solvable, right? Um, one of the issues I think he mentioned was better two-way communication between the pharmacists and the so, doctors. So changing the way the program is set up to allow doctors input on the actual prescription. He did mention that. Well, I, I think that is totally uh, something that should be explored and considered. I, I, I don't think there's any barrier to that. And certainly patients right now are, are encouraged to have conversations with their doctors about the dosing and and, and there, there's no limit to the communication right now. The that other, can happen. The, the other thing he said, though, was talking about reclassifying uh, marijuana, you know, as a Schedule II drug. I don't see that happening anytime soon. And basically having trials as they do would for any other drug for the FDA. Right. Right. I mean, so I think it's interesting to say that we don't know the side effects of um, marijuana. Um, in fact, that's the one thing the federal government has been really good at um, researching is the negative side effects of marijuana. So if you go out, there is more research on that than anything. What we really need research on is the positive medicinal benefits of marijuana um, or cannabis, and it, it's clearly misclassified as a Schedule One drug. It needs that research. It needs to have more um, options for doctors to understand all the rich medical benefits. There's so much research coming out of other countries where they don't they're not hampered by what we have here in the United States. Okay. On that note, sorry, just one more thing. There is legislation um, being uh, sponsored by Senator Rand Paul, Kirsten, Kirsten Gillibrand, and Cory Booker 
um, at the federal level to re reclassify that. So I would encourage anyone supportive of changing the law to contact your legislatures, contact our federal Okay. Well, well, Jessica Hauser, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much, Esme. Okay. Nice to see you again. Absolutely.